thank you we are back all right today we're starting something named rants with kenny now for the most part when we get to this channel i try to keep it as positive as possible because nobody likes to see their favorite player favorite teams favorite coaches whatever get bashed for 10 minutes at a time but every once in a while things get so out of hand that i have to come out here and bash a certain player or bash a certain team or whatever and that's what we're doing in today's video I got to preface this by saying the first thing we're talking about is the Jimmy Butler situation, as you saw from the title. And I've been a Jimmy Butler fan for a few years now. Obviously, I rarely, rarely miss Chicago Bulls games and haven't missed many Bulls games in the past couple years. And as a player that was the leader of our team for a couple years, it's hard not to be a fan of him as a player. But I've always said that my overall criticisms are not put away just because I'm a fan of a person just because I like Jimmy Butler doesn't mean I'm going to hold back on this whole Jimmy Butler situation because he's been in the wrong and his front office has been in the wrong so Jimmy if you're watching this video which I'm pretty sure you're not just know you still got love in my heart but things are getting out of hand all right so a month ago when the whole situation broke where Jimmy Butler's in practice, he's balling up on his teammates, and he went out and did the interview, I made a video saying Jimmy Butler did nothing wrong. And for the most part, I still stick with that. What he did just showed the front office, I don't want to be here, and since you're not taking my trade request seriously, I got to put it out to the public. That's the way I kind of saw it. And well, that was okay. But Jimmy did something in the interview that I mentioned, and it still stands today. Let's just roll the clip. It's not. It's not fixed. Let's just be honest. It's, it's not fixed. Um, Is it fixable? It could be. It could be. So the window was left open for the front office to see this and be like, you know what? He kind of right about we needing him, so we're just not going to trade him. He also said in the interview that he's ready to suit up for whatever team he's on, and they also saw that and was like, you know what? If he's ready to suit up, we're going to play him because we, we literally need him. He told us, he showed us that we need him. And those were the major flaws of that interview. But everything else, I still believe, was completely right. But now it's getting to the point where it's just terrible for both sides. Jimmy's getting the precautionary rest, the general soreness. He'll play a game, miss a game, play a game, miss a game. It is impossible for a team to get a rhythm when their lineup is changing night in and night out, where a player as significant as Jimmy Butler is missing this time, and then you got Josh Okoge. Is that how you pronounce the man's name? Regardless of how you pronounce his name, he's he's been balling as a rookie. It's weird that I still don't know how to pronounce his name. Insert to that star lineup, and things are a lot different. You can just look at the stats of the way their star player, the guy that they have invested so much money in and Carthony Towns plays with Jimmy Butler and without Jimmy Butler. It is crazy to me that the front office can see these stats, that Carthony Towns can average almost 30 points per game without Jimmy and an 18 points per game with Jimmy and be like, you know what, we still not going to trade Jimmy. There's obviously something going on because we've had games with Jimmy's on the court and Carl Anthony Towns on the court and Carthony Towns takes eight shots. He's one of the most brilliant and gifted offensive big men we have in this entire league. There's no way he should be taking that many shots. But without Jimmy there, we get the 18 shots per game night. We get the different things like that. If you're a front office person, how can you not look at these stats and be like, okay, it's time for Jimmy to get out? And I think it has to do with them being so afraid of taking another year back. They missed the playoffs for 12, 13 years or whatever it was. They got a little taste of it, and they figured that even if we keep this player in our locker room that obviously ain't working out, if he can help us get some wins, then it's okay. In reality, it's not. You got Carly Towns locked up for these years, and I promise you, each day that Jimmy Butler's there is really ruining his confidence and his productivity. And, and it's right. I mean, if they trade Jimmy Butler away, they're obviously not going to get a star in return. They'll probably get some solid role players, maybe a couple picks or whatever. So whatever they get in return definitely will not fill the shoes of Jimmy Butler because we've already seen a couple times this year Jimmy Butler coming in the clutch and actually win them games. So it's not going to be that. But you got to think about Carthony Towns, who is their best player. I mean, the guy that they're most invested in is young. Wiggins is also young. Whether you like Wiggins or not, he's still a part of their long-term goal. They are super young. So sure, you take a step back for a year, but maybe next year these guys develop a little bit more and then you're back in playoff contention. I think the front office is so afraid of this falling out of the playoffs again that they're keeping this player on their team even though he doesn't want to be there. I mean, it's, it's got so bad now that in a game that they are losing, Jimmy Butler's on the bench playing with towels with the Warriors fans. He doesn't want to be there. And if I'm a front office person, I'm getting him out of there ASAP. 
because it's obviously not working out. So I haven't been able to actually talk to a Minnesota Timberwolves fan about this. I'm just an outsider looking in. And those are my opinions. My main takeaway is that A, trade Jimmy Butler and B, fire Tom Thibodeau. Easy. So the next thing we want to rant about is the Chicago Bulls. But not even about the actual roster. Isn't that crazy? They're terrible right now. But I'm not... Hey, I'm okay with that. People have been asking me, yo, Kenny, do you think that Fred Hoiberg should be fired? That's a real question amongst Reddit, amongst my general mentions on Twitter. And my response to that is no. He should not be fired right now. You got to think about what we have at the moment. We have Cameron Payne starting at point guard. Though he has had a, a couple decent games this season. He's not even a point guard that should be like in a rotation. If we being real with each other. We have Zach Levine who's playing like the MIP. Then we have Justin Holiday, who's always been super inconsistent. Jabari Parker has been looking terrible so far this year. And Wendell Carter Jr., who's been good. That's it. We got two players in our style lineup right now that are actually performing well. And then we have Chris Dunn, Mari Marketing, Bobby Portis, and Denzel Valentine all out with injuries. That's four of, I would say, our top six or seven players out with injury. We can't fire Fred Hoiberg because he's doing the best he can with the roster we have. The roster we have with these injuries is terrible. It's terrible. And that's not on Fred Hoiberg's back at this moment. Now, if we had the full roster and we were still giving up 150 points to the Warriors, that was one of the most embarrassing losses I've ever experienced as a Bulls fan, by the way. If we were still doing that with our full healthy roster, then we should be in a different conversation. But right now, we, I can't gauge Fred Hoiberg as a coach because he hasn't been given the pieces to succeed so far. When Freud Herbert Hoiberg was hired, he was given the idea of space and pace. That's all it was. Space and pace, space and pace. And then we sign Dwayne Wade <laughs> and we sign Rondo, who for the pace part, pretty solid. But the spacing idea, not really. So we haven't really had or a, a roster to really benefit the Hoy ball. And when the team gets completely healthy, I think we have a roster that would kind of mimic what he wants. Chris Dunn is not a great shooter, but Zach Levine has come out and showed he's a great shooter. Denzel Valentine is above average shooter. Larry Marketing is the best shooter on the roster. And then Wendell Carter Jr. at the five can hit some threes. So the whole space and pace thing will be a lot more prominent once we have our team fully healthy. So I don't think Fred Hoiberg should be fired right now, but I got to say, I'm not a Fred Hoiberg lover and I'm not a Fred Hoiberg hater either i'm just in the middle right now because it's hard to gauge him as a coach because he hasn't been given the materials to be successful and right now i'm okay with losing i'm okay with losing right now so don't fire fred at the moment but if we get our team back and things are looking terrible then we'll talk then let's briefly talk about the lakers real quick we saw them get destroyed by the toronto raptors who did not have Kawhi. i was actually just very very excited to watch Kawhi versus lebron Obviously, that did not happen, and they didn't even need him. He rested, and they, they were up by 30 at one point, all right? So, coming into the season, I've said that I believe that the Lakers, this Lakers team is a playoff team, but I did not believe that they were going to be a top four C with this current roster. And some people looked at me like I was crazy. I mean, they still can't. It's still very early in the season, but I'm sticking with my gut and saying that they're going to be a playoff team, but they're going to be like the five through eight C. And it's mostly due to two things. One, they are super young. Like, yes, they added the best player in the league and possibly the greatest player of all time, depending on who you ask. But the rest of that roster is so, so young. Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, Cal Kuzma, and Brandon Ingram are four quality pieces in their rotation, and they're all under 24 years old. And when you have players that young, one thing we're going to see is a lot of inconsistencies. One night a player looks great, and next night he looks like his younger self. He looks how he looks his age. And that's what we're seeing. Players are up and down, up and down. And that's kind of the way I thought this season was going to go. And that's the way it kind of started out. And the second thing is defense. Their defense has not been very good. And I don't know if it's miscommunications or lack of effort, but there were so many times in that game last night where somebody got beat back door. It's just, it's kind of unacceptable. So I still stick by my gut and saying that they won't be a top four C, but I don't think we should be super overreacting to this slow start because out of all their losses, this is the one loss that just looked at, looked terrible. I mean, we did have moments in other losses where LeBron missed two free throws or a late turnover cost them the game. But regardless, the team hasn't looked terrible. They just don't look great, you know? 
So I'm very curious to how the Lakers organization is going to do this because obviously a lot of people are under heat. Luke Walton, we got some fans calling for his head and all of that. So I wonder how they're going to play this out. Will they continue to keep that young core or eventually will we see them get traded? Not saying this season, but next year or whatever. Do they want to try to gun it? Because LeBron James is 33 years old right now. I know you got him locked up for four years, but who knows? In year three, we may not get the LeBron James that we see right now. So they got a lot of decisions to make, and that's why the NBA is great. We just got to sit back and wait and see what happens. And I think that is all for my rants right now. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. If you're new around this channel, which a lot of you guys are, the channel has been growing a lot over the past week or so. First of all, welcome. And secondly, uh, I do have a podcast that we release two times a week over on the House of Highlights YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description. I also put an end card. It's basically what you see here of me talking to the camera with three other co-hosts that also know a lot about basketball. It can be super fun. And uh, if you're looking for something that extra 40 minutes of NBA talk, that's something you should go subscribe to and go watch. Um, this has been Kenny. I'll be back tomorrow. Thank y'all so much for all the love over the past couple weeks. We really about to end 2018 on the bang. At least that's my plan. So thank y'all. Peace. Do you think you remember that year that they they were the worst team in NBA history? They won seven games, fifty oh, yeah. something losses, whatever. Should have got Anthony Davis. They got the number two pick, and instead of getting Anthony Davis, they got Michael Kidd Gilchrist. How how disappointing is that? And their their whole future, or like they, what could have been, if they tanked out and got the number one pick? Anthony Davis and, and Kemba Walker right now be playing together. They passed up on Bradley Beal, which they would have would have helped them as well. <laughs> Mike Kidd Gilchrist. Nasty backcourt. Ugh, Mike Kidd Gilchrist is me. Make that whole situation worse.